The Romance of the Ranchos. San Diego, 1827. Carrillo Senorita elopes with American captain. Los Angeles, 1831. Carrillo writes first book published by a Californian. Los Angeles, 1837. Carrillo named governor of California. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a dramatization of the colorful events and characters which form the background of history of our Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, has come to the microphone with another true story of the days of the dawn. Now, you can do something practical, something fine for the men in the Navy. Sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen everywhere look to Navy Relief to aid their families at home in times of emergency and distress. Since Pearl Harbor, demands upon Navy Relief have been the greatest in history. So now, Southern Californians are being asked to help raise $500,000. You can match the Navy's courage with your response. Be generous in your aid to Navy Relief. Be sure to listen for a special gift offer which Frank Graham will make later in the program. Now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Tonight we end our present series of the Romance of the Ranchos... And as a fitting climax to these programs, we're going to tell the story of a family. A family which, throughout the history of the Southland, has been recognized as one of the great families of California. Listen to the dramatic and romantic incidents in the lives of the Carrillos. It's a colorful chapter of the romance of the ranchos. The story of the Carrillo family in California starts with the earliest history of the province. For it was in the year 1769 when the first expedition of white men under Governor Gaspar de Portola came north to San Diego that the first chapter was written. Among that party of the first settlers was a soldier by the name of Jose Raimundo Carrillo. He was married by the great padre Junipero Serra and started a family which merged many of the great families of California into one kinship. But not before he was made a captain in the army. Through the years, the Carrillos married De La Guerras, Picos, Castros, Vallejos, Ortegas, Bandinis, and Del Valles, as well as Americans like Henry Fitch and John Wilson. But at first, Jose Raimundo's family consisted of four sons and a daughter. The eldest son, Carlos, followed in the footsteps of his father and became a sergeant in the Presidio at Santa Barbara. It was there in 1817 that he saw unexpected action. What is this, Guillermo? A horseman, and in a hurry. Oh, see? Oh, who can it be? I do not know. He's a stranger to me. Hola, senor. Hola. Hola, senor. Yeah, you are in a hurry, senor. See, si, I come from Monterey to warn you. Warn us? See, si, of privateers. The devil Bouchard has landed at Monterey, sacked the city. He sails south even now. Caramba. And he will surely try to land here. Or up at the coast at El Refugio. Oh, see, si, at the ranchos of the Ortegas. See. Si. I shall want a new horse to ride on to the south. See, si, see, si, and right away. And we, Guillermo, must prepare our defenses. Sergeant Carlos Antonio Carrillo headed the small company which went to the Ortega Ranch and routed the famous privateer Bouchard, who had indeed landed there. It was after the fighting was over that some of his men approached Carrillo. Sergeant Carrillo. See, si. what have you there, Sergeant Lugo? You have captured some of them? See, si, three. And he will not hang them, Carlos. He insists that they be spared, especially the big one, the one that fought like a tiger. So? And why not, sir? Not only because I'm a kind-hearted man, amigo mio, but also because I have taken a liking to this one, this big buffalo who speaks a strange language, but who calls himself Jose. 
Jose, the Englishman. But he is a member of the Devil Bouchard's crew. Not anymore, for we have captured him. Juan Ortega wanted to string him up pronto, but he... But he... Sergeant Lugo stopped it. Not I alone, amigo mio. There was another. Oh, and who was that? The Senorita Guadalupe, Senor Ortega's daughter. It seems she and the big buffalo Jose have met before. You understand, eh? So, <laughs> <laughs> romance, eh? <laughs> well, then, senores, who are we to interfere with love? Of course he shall not be hung. I have offered to take him in my home and be responsible for him. Oh, so, very well, senor. And perhaps the senorita may teach Jose the Englishman to stay here in California and not meddle with privateers, eh? <laughs> Sergeant Carrillo participated there in one of the most romantic episodes of California history when the American, Joseph Chapman, called Jose the Englishman, was captured. And with the help of a beautiful senorita, later became an outstanding citizen. But a few years later, another romantic chapter in the history of the Carrillos was being written. It was in San Diego, where Jose Raimundo's cousin, Joaquin, had a beautiful daughter who captured many an eye. And one day in 1826, an American ship captain came ashore. Well, this is San Diego. This is it, Captain. Not much to look at, is it? Well, that depends. This town is a little backwards, perhaps, but it might be a fine place to live. <laughs> Not for me. If I were looking for a place to lie back and dream, I'd take the Sandwich Islands. Now, there's a place a man can relax. And those hula dancers and the grass skirts... You can you... have your hula dancers, Albert. I'll take the vision of loveliness I see coming down the street. Huh? What are you talking about? You lost your eyes. Look, that girl. Have you ever seen anything more lovely? Which one? Oh, you mean that one coming toward us? Yes, she's beautiful. Gorgeous. <laughs> Captain, you're the one that's lost his eyes. Uh, she couldn't compare to those who... Look fine, good. cultured, too. Albert, there's a dream. Wait a minute till I get a closer look. Then I'll tell you what to think. I wonder who she is. Why don't you ask her? Huh? Well, why not? Uh, good day, miss. Uno? Listen to me, senor. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, buenos dias, senorita. Buenos dias. I do not know you, senor. No, I... Oh, I hope you won't be offended that I spoke. It is not the custom in my country to speak to a lady you do not know, senor. Well, I'm Captain Henry Fitch, master of the brig Maria Esther. That's your service, ma'am. Oh, a ship's captain. That's right. And this is the first time you have visited San Diego? Yes, ma'am. The first time. Oh, then it is no wonder I do not know you. But I... Well, I hope that that situation may be remedied. That is, I hope that perhaps we might become friends. Oh, that is not for me to say, senor. You must see my father and obtain his consent. Oh, well, of course I will. Only, who is your father, senorita? He's Don Joaquin Carrillo. You do not know of him? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't. But I shall. And I'm sure that he must be a fine gentleman to have so lovely a daughter. Oh, senor. You must not say such things. It is not proper. But I'm only a helpless man, senorita. Helpless before your beauty. And when I see such an angel, I cannot help but... Senor, I will not stay and hear such Wait, things. Senorita, I, I didn't mean to offend. But you have said far too much, senor. For the present, if you have more to say, you had better see my father. Soon, senor. I certainly shall. But, senorita, wait. Come back. As la vista, senor. But, senorita. Oh, Albert. She was interested. She wants me to call on her father. I couldn't hear much of the conversation, Captain, but she did smile. The smile of an angel. Find out who she is? Yes, the daughter of Don Joaquin Carrillo. Carrillo? Yeah. Then that was Senorita Josefa, the most beautiful girl in San Diego. Of course, that's what I told you. But she is, well, that is, the, the, the governor... Well, what about the governor? Well, governor Echeandia wants to marry her. The governor? Yeah, they're almost, uh, well, practically engaged. Almost, but not yet engaged? Oh, well, that's what I hear. Then it's not too late. And the governor had better look to his laurels because he has a rival in Captain Henry Fitch. And Captain Fitch was a formidable rival. Within a short time, he won the heart of Josefa, and the governor lost out. Don Enrique, as the captain was called, embraced the Catholic faith, and everything was ready for the wedding. But on the great day... Josefa, my child! Hmm? It is you, Don Pio. Querido. Oh, you know Don Pio Pico, my cousin? Si. Welcome, Don Pio. Gracias, senor. Tell me, what is this delay? What caused this irregularity? Oh, no one knows, senor. 
Well, Padre has called us all here in the church before the wedding ceremony could be started. Well, it is most irregular. I do not like it at all. I shall make a protest. Oh, wait, Don Pio. Here comes the Padre now. Senorita. Senor. My children, it grieves me to tell you this. I have just uh, spoken with a messenger from the governor. Uh, there is a law I, I cannot marry two people unless both are citizens of Mexico. What is uh -huh. this? Don Enrique Fitch is not a citizen, and the governor has forbidden the marriage. Oh, why, that can't be. Well, that's unfair. He said nothing about it before. Querido mio. Oh, it's all right. We'll fix it some Caramba, this snake in the grass, that viper, he, he has done this because... Because he himself is a disappointed suitor. He shall pay for this humiliation. No, don't feel. Si. He's right. If it's a law, he is right. You're going to have to wait a few days until I can become a citizen. A few days? Senor, you do not understand. It is the governor who can give the citizenship. If and when he likes. It may take weeks or months or, or forever. Oh, no. No, don't feel. But what can we do? We must do something. See, si, can we will. Don Enrique, is your ship still at anchor in the harbor? See? Then I have it. Come with me. I have a plan. Jose. Jose. Enrique, you here at my window. See, si, querida. But you, you should not see. For we are not, not yet married. Oh, Enrique. Oh, my darling. Querida. Come, you must not cry. But tonight, even now, we would have been married. Attending the wedding fiesta. I know, but it's going to be all right. Come, <laughs> now is not the time for tears. There's much to be done. Done? See, si. Hasn't Don Fio told you of his plan? See, si. See, si, but, querido, it is impossible. I cannot do it. Not do it? Carita Mia, you don't mean that. Oh, you must understand. My father, he would never approve of me running away with you. He would never speak to me again. I think he would, especially if Don Pio explained it to him. But the governor, he would arrest you. By the time we come back, all will be forgotten and forgiven. Don Pio will see to that. But, but Enrique, it is not right. My running away with you, not married. But it will be. For you'll not be with me. You'll sail with my friend Captain Barry and his wife in their ship. I will sail in mine. And we'll meet in South America and be married there. Oh, I'm afraid. But my darling, you want to be my wife. More than you will ever know, querido mio. My life was nothing before I met you. I can remember nothing. You. You are all that makes it real to me. Oh, Safer, then we will not wait. We will go. I'll give you courage, little one. See, si. when I am with you, I do have the courage. Everyone will say, that crazy American, he kidnapped Josefa. And nobody shall blame you. But they must not blame you, Enrique. They won't. When we come back, happy and safely married, no one shall be angry but only glad for us. Oh, Safa, it's not right to thwart a great love like ours. We were meant to be together. Always. See, si. see, si, querido mio. Always. May you go? See, si. I will go with you. Mi amor. Bueno. And pack a light bag right away. Don Pio will come for you in an hour. Tonight? In an hour. Let's not allow another day to separate us. No, not another day. I will go, Enrique. I will. Then this is goodbye for a little while. I shall only be able to watch you from the deck of my ship until we reach our port. I shall be with you in my heart, querido mio. And I with you. Hasta la vista, Josefa. Enrique. Enrique, wait. Goodbye, my love, for a little while. When you think of the title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, think of the word protection. For protection is the essence of both of the major types of service provided by the company. 
Title Insurance Service is your protection against loss of investment in your home or other real estate because of defective titles. The company issues various types of title insurance policies to meet various needs. Each policy specifically states the scope and kind of protection it provides. Trust Department Service is for the protection of the assets of your estate generally, either during or after your lifetime. Expert estate planning to prevent unnecessary shrinkage of estates through tax, probate, and other expenses, and experienced estate management for the conservation of estates are available to you through this, the oldest trust company in the Pacific Southwest. A letter, personal visit, or telephone call will bring you complete information without obligation about any of the protective services offered by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Upon the return of Captain Henry Fitch and his bride, the troubles were quickly smoothed over, and all was forgiven. And so closed a romantic chapter in California history. But more exciting chapters were to be written into the history of the Carrillo family. In 1827, Carlos Antonio was sent to the Mexican Congress to represent the province of California. And there, one of his speeches made him famous, for it was published in book form. It was the first book by a Californiano, and has been regarded as the finest defense of the California missions yet published. Later, it was the turn of Carlos's young brother, Jose Antonio Carrillo, to take his place in the Mexican Congress. Jose was the firebrand of the family, the politician par excellence, a vehement supporter of every measure which might give California home rule and thus separate the government from Mexico City. And so it was that he approached his brother Carlos in 1837. What? Carlos, this Alvarado is not legally governor of California. This Alvarado, as you call him, is our kinsman and a fine man, and he is governor, a Californiano governor at last. That is what we wanted. But he is not, is he? Governor for the northern section. They like him, but he's not governor for us here, for he wishes to move the capital back to the north when it rightfully belongs here. See, si, but that is such a little thing. It is not a little thing. If the capital is moved to the north, they will forget us here, leave us without adequate government. You know that. See, si, perhaps. But Juanito is the governor legal. But he is not. Our nephew is no longer governor. He got this title by a revolution. And the Mexican government has appointed a new legal governor. Who is? You. Carlos Antonio Carrillo is now governor of California by order of the Mexican Congress. But, Jose, I do not want to be governor. Nonsense. Any man would like to be governor. Why did you not get them to appoint you instead of me? You would rather be governor than me. Nonsense. You deserve it. In this way, it is practically the same anyway. You, my brother, are governor, and I am your advisor. Oh, Jose, you and your plots. First, you plot against Governor Victoria. See, si, and run him out of California. See, si, but always you want a Californiano governor. Now that we have one, you want to change that. See, si, so that we may have a Southern Californiano governor. Ah, and I am the one who must bear the burden. Not the burden, Carlos, the honor. Just think, tomorrow you will take the oath of office, and Carlos Antonio Carrillo will go down in history as a great governor of California. Ah, but what about Juanito? What will he do? He will not stand by and let you depose him without a fight? No, perhaps not. But we will beat him. See, let the tyrant of Rabo storm. He shall be defeated by Governor Carrillo. <laughs> but Alvarado was not defeated. Instead, his army swept down in Los Angeles, swept Governor Carrillo's forces on to the south. No battles were fought, but finally they met on the plains of Las Flores, near Oceanside, and fought their fight at the conference table. But Juanito, my governorship is approved by the city of Mexico. That may be, senor, but I have not been officially informed of it. And hence, I must retain my rights as provisional governor. Oh, but now, Juanito, you must... Don't call me Juanito. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, I am sorry, Juanito, uh, <laughs> senor... <laughs> I cannot seem to forget the fact that you are my young kinsman. He will forgive me, eh? See, si, si, of course, Don Carlos. But don't say it again. It makes me look foolish in front of the man. And after all, I am the governor. No, I am the governor, Juanito. <laughs> Senor, if you use that word once more, I shall sound the charge, wipe out every man of your army. Oh, dispense me. I, I am sorry. It just slipped out. <laughs> well, see, but it does not slip out again. Because I am the governor. Very well, very well. We are both governors. Let us start from there. You govern the north. I will govern the south. Is there any reason why we cannot split the province into two sections, eh? 
Have the Mexicanos given you authority to do that? Oh, no, but what does that matter? If we can settle this between ourselves, well, so much the better. No, for I've sent to Mexico to explain my position. And I would not be surprised to learn when my messenger returns that the city of Mexico will declare me legal governor after all. Oh, well, senor, if they do that, well, that will be all right with me. For I have never wanted the position anyway. But until they do, we must work out something between ourselves. Very well, Don Carlos. I am willing to listen to reason. Bueno, bueno, Juanito. Then we shall... Caramba, you did it again. What, Juanito? Juanito! Oh, oh. Madre de Dios, it is the finish. At the end, I will stand no more. This conference is at an end. And now, senor, I shall see that you are to be governor no longer. What, Juanito, you... Caramba! Negotiations were interrupted by Alvarado's anger, but in the end, a truce was called. But now, support for Don Carlos Antonio's governorship cooled, and soon his own men gave up the fight. For a short time, Alvarado jailed both Carlos and Jose Antonio, but quickly they were sufficiently back in favor to receive his grant of the island of Santa Rosa. As the years went on, both men assumed important roles in the progress of Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. The incorrigible Jose Antonio continued his plotting and was a leader of the revolt against another Mexican governor, Michel Torreno. And again, in 1846, when revolt against the American forces of occupation fled, General Jose Antonio Carrillo was in the thick of it. It was he who worked out a ruse to use against Stockton. When the American landed at San Pedro in an attempt to recapture Los Angeles, Jose called Benjamin B. Wilson to him. You sent for me, General Carrillo? See, si, Don Benito. I want your help. But I am your prisoner, senor. See, si, no matter. You wish to see this war ended as soon as possible, just as I do. Very well, then. You will help me? Well, if it will end the war, of course. Bueno. Stockton has just sailed into San Pedro Harbor. Soon he will land and march to Los Angeles. But you are to meet him with terms. And what are your terms? That he may occupy the coast and the ports while we are left unmolested in the interior until the end of hostilities in Mexico. Then in the treaty conference will be decided the fate of California. Fair enough. But what makes you think Stockton will accept any terms? I have provided for that. You see over there behind the hill, horsemen milling about. Good Lord. Why, by the size of that cloud of dust, there must be a thousand horses behind that hill. See, and the Commodore Stockton will realize that too. But General Carrillo, there aren't that many horsemen in your army or in the whole of this area. No, but Stockton doesn't know that. You see, I have a hundred horsemen there driving a thousand wild mustangs back and forth. From the harbor, it will look like a huge army. And Stockton will be frightened into accepting our terms. Well, General, you have quite an inventive mind. I see, but this is no time for compliments. You must go. They will be landing any time now. Very well. But wait, General. Have you looked out into the bay recently? No, I... Caramba! What is this? I'm afraid your trick has worked a little too well, General. It looks to me like Commodore Stockton has hoisted sail and is putting back out to sea. Jose's ruse worked too well, and it might have saved considerable bloodshed. But the Carrillo family adapted themselves to the new American life which took root in California and kept their place as one of California's first families. Their high position in California history was well illustrated in a simple service which took place at the Mission Santa Barbara in the year 1852. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And so we place Carlos Antonio Carrillo here under the altar of the church he served so well. It is due to men like him that this land has grown great. For it was he and men like him who founded not only a new province, but a great and gracious culture, which is our heritage. May the Lord bless him and keep him. The heritage of greatness, which was Carlos Antonio's, and Jose Antonio's, and Jose Raimundo's, and all of the Carrillo families, has been carried on through succeeding generations. Carlos's son, Pedro, was a leading figure in Los Angeles and Santa Monica life. And today, a great-grandson of Carlos Antonio, governor of California, is also a famous and well-loved figure of the state. Leo Carrillo, famous as a motion picture star, respected as worthy successor to the heritage of his family and of old California. He's been preeminently active in civic affairs and in promoting projects to keep alive the beauty and romance of that graceful era. It is he who authored these words 
which glorify the days of the old missions. Out where the poppy nods its head, like a tiny mission bell, where the padre walks through the mustard stalks along the old Camino Real, silent milestones mark the way, telling tales of an old tradition, relics of a glittering age, indelibly set on history's page, the last of the Spanish mission. Ladies and gentlemen, a special message from Frank Graham. Our thanks to Leo Carrillo for the use of his fine little poem and for help with details of the story. And our thanks to you of the radio audience for your friendly interest in our programs. With this broadcast, The Romance of the Ranchos concludes its current series of dramatic stories of early days in California. All of us in the cast and our sponsors, the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, sincerely hope that you've obtained both pleasure and profit from listening to them. And that through this closer acquaintance with our Southland's exciting and colorful history, you have enjoyed, as we have, a new interest and a keener appreciation of living in Southern California. And now before going off the air, Title Insurance and Trust Company has authorized me to offer all you good friends a parting gift. To all of you who would like to have it, the company will send you, with its compliments, a copy of its colorful early California rancho map. Now, I've seen this map, in fact, I have one framed in my den at home. And every one of my friends who's seen it has wanted one for himself. So I know you'll want one. It's 18 by 20 inches, printed in full color on heavy paper, just right for framing. It shows the boundaries, the streams, the hills and valleys of all 52 of the original ranchos that comprised what is now Los Angeles County. For your copy of this rancho map, just send a postcard or letter to the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, 433 South Spring Street, or to me here at KNX in Hollywood. Be sure to write your name and address plainly and address it to the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, 433 South Spring Street, or to Frank Graham, KNX in Hollywood. Now, until we meet here again, this is your wandering vaquero speaking for all of us and saying, hasta la vista, señoras y señores. <laughs> Romance of the Ranchos has been a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero. The stories have been dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Gaylord Carter. Bob Lamont speaking. Good night. Good night.